HVAC system designs, characteristics, and implications. There are three main design stages that occur during a typical HVAC design process. The first stage is the preliminary design stage. Actions in this stage include listing the activity comfort needs, developing activity schedule, analyzing on-site energy resources, listing climate design strategies, consider building form alternatives, considering combinations of active and passive systems, and determining alternatives sized by general design guidelines. The team members in the stage include an architect for small buildings and architects, engineers, and landscaping architects for large projects. The second stage is the design development stage. Actions in this stage include establishing design conditions by activity and schedule, determining HVAC zones using activities, schedule, orientation, and internal heat gains, estimating thermal loads on each zone, selecting HVAC systems, identifying and sizes HVAC components and locations, mechanical rooms, distribution trees, in-space components, and laying out the system. The team members in this stage include the architectural or mechanical engineer, the third stage is the design finalizing stage. Actions in this stage include comparing HVAC system layout drawings with other building systems, verifying match between loads and components, and completing final layout drawings. The team members in this stage include architects, other consultants, and an HVAC system designer. The designer of a building's mechanical system looks at whether the building's needs are dominated by heating or by cooling concerns. Because climate is such a strong factor in small buildings and heating and cooling needs may vary from room to room, localized equipment may be the better choice over a centralized system. There are two system types, a local HVAC system and a central HVAC system, each with its own advantages and disadvantages. Advantages of a local HVAC system include responds quickly to individual rooms' needs, does not need large central equipment spaces, has shorter distribution trees, localizes breakdowns, has simple control systems, and heating and cooling use limited for energy conservation. Disadvantages of a local HVAC system include machine noise in room, maintenance workers in occupied rooms, many local filters to maintain, and few opportunities to use waste energy. Advantages of a central HVAC system include equipment located outside of occupied space, offers better maintenance access, features energy recovery from boilers and chillers. Centralized mechanical spaces concentrate noise and heat for easy control. Air intakes can be high above street pollution, and regular maintenance of centralized air filtering equipment results in long equipment life. Disadvantages of a central HVAC system include mechanical rooms need to be centrally located near area served, breakdown of single piece of equipment may affect entire building, energy is wasted when entire system is activated to serve one zone, direct access to outside for fresh air and for installation and removal of equipment, Rooms for heating, cooling, and AHU equipment need ceilings around 3.7 meters, or 12 feet high, and the distribution trees are large and controls are complex. Uniformity in the design of a building has implications for the HVAC system and for its interior design. Uniform ceiling heights, lighting placement, and HVAC grill locations increase flexibility in office arrangements and extend the building's useful lifespan. Four basic types of office space can be interchanged within a flexible overall plan. Enclosed offices, bullpen offices with repeated, identical workstations with desk height dividers, uniform open plan offices with higher partitions, and free-form open plan offices with partitions of varying heights. However, uniformity in ceiling lighting, air handling, and size can make the design of support surfaces such as connecting corridors and lounges difficult. On the other hand, diverse design elements require complete and detailed design of a space, 
but the resulting design may be a more complex and interesting building for designer, builder, and user. Variety aids user orientation and distinguishes spaces from one another. Some spaces require diverse thermal conditions. In the winter, people expect offices to be relatively warmer than circulation spaces, which are transitional from the exterior to the interior. Just like a space can seem lighter and higher if preceded by a lower, darker space, transitional spaces that are closer to outside temperatures can make key spaces seem more comfortable without extreme heating or cooling, thereby saving energy over the life of the building. The design of the air circulation and ventilation system interacts with the layout of the furniture. Even furniture like filing cabinets and acoustic screens less than 1.5 meters or 5 feet high can impede air circulation, especially if they extend to the floor. Some sources recommend an open space of at least 25 to 51 millimeters or 1 to 2 inches at the base with 152 millimeters or 6 inches allowing even better airflow. If walls are full height petitions in closed spaces, each enclosed space should have one supply vent and one return or exhaust vent.